Hi everyone, this is Satyajit. Welcome to my channel, Cloud Journey with Satyajit. So today we are going to discuss about Transit Gateway in details. So in our earlier videos, we understand about how to create the Transit Gateway in one account. And also we created Transit Gateway in different account and we shared in Transit Gateway between uh, using the resource access manager and we shared our transit gateway in another account okay so today we are going to discuss about the terminology of transit gateway like what is association and what is propagation and how is the architecture flow okay so before discussing about the transit gateway we know like uh, what is the benefit of transit gateway and why transit gateway came into picture okay uh, so before transit gateway if the customer have multiple VPCs and they want to communicate with each other, then we required VPC peering on that cases. And uh, uh, if we have 10 number of VPCs, then we have to create N into N minus one by two. Okay, it's 10 into nine by two, it's 45 number of peering connections we need to prepare. Okay, if it is a number of five VPCs, then we need to prepare the 10. So like the formula N into N minus one by two. So it's a lot of peering connections and uh, something, some VPC to be requester, some VPC to be acceptor. So it is a mess like architecture. So it will be very, very complicated for an administrator or an infrastructure engineers to modify it and also to troubleshoot it. That is one approach. And another thing, let's say the customer having five VPCs and customer having the on-premises environment. So if they require VPN separately, okay, then we have five VPC, then we need to create five VPN. So generally, if VPC peered, then if all the five VPC peered with each other, one VPN is enough. But the bandwidth or slowness issue can come, okay? So for that reason, some of the customers say they require separate VPN for each VPCs. Then we have to create five VPN connections, okay? 10 VPC peering connections, and you need to connect everything. So it will be a fully mesh-like architecture. So to overcome that, if we create one transit, if you see this diagram, let's say customer having four number of VPC. So we have six peering connections and also customer have the side to side VPN and customer have direct connect. Okay. So on premise is connected. So it will be fully mesh like architecture and it will be very, very complicated for an infrastructure engineer to manage it. Okay. So after transit gateway came into picture, if you see the diagram, only one transit gateway so we can attach all those vpcs and the vpn connections and also direct connect so if, if a number of vpn connections we can attach the number of vpn connections to the transit gateway okay so only one centralized transit gateway so transit gateway work as a hub spoke model like transit gateway will be centralized hub and other vpcs okay they will be part of the transit gateway okay and if transit gateway generally the huge cases of transit to like currently all the customers and all the customers they're creating the aws account like the control tower and landing zone setup like they have multiple accounts like they have their centralized network account they have their uh, inspector account they have their logging account and they have their uh, auditing account so they have multiple accounts okay so on that cases generally we use transit gateway so that what will happen transit gateway only be created in the networking account okay through, through and other vpcs which are part of other account let's say uh, logging account or audit account or uh, inspector account right so on that cases just they have to create the vpcs and our transit gateway need to be shared with that, okay? Via RAM, resource access manager will share it. And in every individual account, the user has to create the VPC attachment. That's it. So that is the use cases of transit gateway, okay? So that we will discuss in a later, like when the use cases of transit gateway, but generally we have to be create a centralized transit gateway and all other attachment we need to add, okay? That is the uh, benefit of transit gateway. Transit gateway is a regional service. Let that mean if a Mumbai region want transit gateway. So in that region, if you have multiple VPC, you can attach it. Okay. But if in another region, okay, let's say uh, Northern Virginia region, there is your number of VPCs are there. So okay, if there is another transit gateway is there, so we can create the peering between transit gateway, both transit gateway, which is in Mumbai region and which is in Northern Virginia region. So 
pairing connections also as an attachment. If you see this diagram, if you have multiple regions and multiple transit gateway, we can pair this transit gateway and this VPC, like whatever the resources in this VPC, they can communicate with these resources okay, easily. Okay, So in transit gateway attachment, as you know earlier, the attachment can be a VPC, can be a VPN, or can be in peering connections or it will be in direct connect okay so they have multiple and we already discussed as a vpc as a peering connections uh, as, a, as a attachment okay and we'll discuss more into that peering connections and other as an attachment okay so generally how transit get a working principle okay let us go to this diagram or, or let us create a transit gateway whenever we are going to create a transit gateway let's say i'm creating taste tgw some transit gateway description let's testing purpose okay i'm creating transit gateway if you see here this is saying amazon side autonomous system number okay this is a autonomous system okay we'll discuss more in what is autonomous system that is a networking concept but why it is required if i am not going to choose anything then it will select by default okay the autonomous system but generally when we are going to create the transit gateway peering okay so one transit in this uh, region and other account this region if that both the transit data having ASS, asn number same then there will be complicated so it will be issue can face so you can you can give your own transit key to asn number own number that is the recommended value that is a private value we need to provide it or if you don't provide it then it will take it by its own okay that is uh, the asn number okay if you see here there is a something called default route table association and default route table propagations okay so Jack, uh, whenever we are going to create transit gateway by default the transit gateway route table will be created okay just like in the vpc case whenever we are creating our own vpc right by default the route there is a default route table will be created like that here whenever you are going to create one transit gateway by default this transit gateway route table will be created and that uh, whatever the and what it what does mean by default route table associations and default route table propagation it means that when we are going to create an attachment okay it automatically associated and automatically propagated we don't have to do anything changes on the routing on the transit gateway part so it will be very very easier like that uh, so what I mean is, let's say the use cases, we have one transit gateway created in account A, okay, which is our master account or which is the, let's understand, which is a network account, okay, and we have multiple accounts, account A, B, C, which is uh, managed or uh, part of organizations, but they're different account, and in that different account, VPCs are there. Okay. And we need to attach that VPC to the transit gateway. So what we will do, this transit gateway, we share as a resource access manager to that respective accounts. Once this is shared, they can do the attached, okay? They can do the VPC attachments. Once this is attached, as we enabled already default routable associations and default routable propagations, once they attach that automatically on our transit gateway route table, rule will be associations that their cider range will be associated and be propagated so there will not be any issues and you can easily make the communications we can just understand the flow of the architecture of transit gateway okay so these two things is mandatory field mandatory in the sense like we can deselect it if you are going to deselect it it means it is not going to create any route table and it is not going to when we create an attachment it is not going to create the associations and propagations rule. So in that cases, we have to manually do the changes, okay? We will discuss that architecture as well, but just now we'll consider when the default route table associations is selected and default propagations is selected. And this multicast support, DNS support, and ECMP support we'll discuss slowly, okay? And once that is done, there is saying auto accept shared attachment, which we discussed earlier, or uh, whenever any transit gateway, uh, shared okay when they attached okay uh, say through ram the transit gateway shared with other account and when they created the attachment it is going to accept like uh, ask for the approval okay then you need to accept it but it is auto acceptance is selected means we do not have to do anything automatically it will be attached to the transit gateway 
that's it whenever you are going to create transit gateway it will take some time to create transit gateway but if you can verify it is in pending state but after some time the route table will be created transit gateway is there if you see the transit gateway uh, route table there is no route table now okay but it is going to create one route table when it is in the transit gateway will be in the available state okay by that meantime let us understand the working principle of transit gateway how the generally communications happen okay if you see my architecture diagram okay so i am using an aws cloud and i have three vpc vpc a vpc b and vpc c and all have different cider so the conditions must be there like if the cider range overlap then they cannot be an attachment in the transit gateway so cider should not be overlap okay so now we have a vpc a vpc b and vpc c and we have created one transit gateway okay so on this transit gateway once we created by default the route table will be there so transit gateway route default default route table will be there okay and when we attach like the vpc a as a attachment once we attached then this vpc cider range will be automatically attached to the transit gateway route table like that whenever this vpc b is attached to the transit gateway automatically this cider also added automatically associated and respectively for the vpc c so now we have all the vpc a b c already attached to the transit gateway route table okay transit gateway is created all are attached now how the communications will happen okay this is the transit gateway route table so now it is working as a dynamic routing it means whenever the any vpc let's say another vpc d once we attach that vpc d cider range will be automatically added to the route table. so it is as a dynamic routing not static okay that is on the route table of the transit gateway now let's say in the ec2 instance created in vpc a b and c respectively okay now my requirement is the ec2 instance which is present in vpc a wants to communicate with the ec2 instance which is present in the vpc b so how that the communications will happen okay and we know every resource ec2 instance something they they are present in a subnet particular subnet and that subnet having one route table okay so now ec2a present in that sense this subnet having one route table and already whatever the route table it belong to there will be local route local route means what is the side range they have their local route okay if you see this ec2 instance they have a local route of that cider and the vpcc they have the local route right in the route table like uh, uh, I can show you like if you go to the respective VPC. So in the VPC, if I go to the particular subnet, uh, let me go for, uh, let me go to the EC2 Mumbai region because I generally created the resources in the Mumbai region. If you go for the Mumbai and uh, uh, let me go for to the EC2 instance. And let me go to any EC2 instance. Let's say this is an EC2 instance. If you go to the networking and go to the particular subnet and any route table, if you see there will be local route will be added. This local route means this is the uh, subnet. This is the VPC of the local. Like for that, I mentioned here in that VPC, whatever the cider range, that should be local route. Okay. Target is a local. You can verify here. Target as local. Now, every VPC have a target as local of the side range. So now, my EC2 instance wants to connect to that via transit gateway. So here I have added, so all my VPC are 10, 0 series, right? So I have taken the big series like 10, 0, 0 slash 8, okay? For the safety purpose or for the easier purpose, I, written, I, I taken all slash 8 means if they come up with 10.19.0016, 10.20.0016. So all ranges cover right here, 10, 0, 0, slash 8, very big side range. So we don't have to do manually anything. So I have added 10, 0, 0, 8 and target should be via this transit gateway. Same everywhere I have added, okay? So now this dynamic route automatically added and this static route I have configured on the every resource EC2 instance. Now, let me 
I logged into this is two instance and from here I can do the telnet connections or ping connections or any SSS connections to this server and both are see different side range how communications will happen when from this EC2 instance I will try telnet 10.1.0.13 let's say this server 10.1.0.13 IP okay so telnet 10.1.0.13 uh, 22 port i am trying to tell it so once i will try to different ip definitely the request will go to the route table okay from this route table it will verify whether i have a route to this destination's ip or not so it will check okay 10 0, 0, 18, 8 already there okay then we are good then where it is the target so target transit gateway so what will happen this request they will forward to this transit gateway if you see the dotted line the request come to the transit gateway once it reached to the transit gateway then transit gateway route it will check okay whatever the 10.1 series does i have any route then it will verify okay 10.1 yes i have a route to the attachment b then what will happen it will send this request to this via attachment b and finally it will reach the ec2 instance so that <coughs> sorry the communications can happen like this now ec2 wants to connect with c same same thing it will check first is routable yes route is added then request will be sending to the transit gateway from that transit gateway it will verify the route table then from here it will take to this ec2 instance okay so like this way the communications will happen now if you see the transit gateway which you have created now okay i created in the northern virginia region okay so transit gateway is in available state so now i can verify i can go to the transit gateway route table see route table already created but if you verify there is no associations and there is no propagation why because because we did not added any attachment okay let me do one attachment let me create an attachment create transit gateway attachment let's say i will do vpc attachment transit gateway and a type is vpc and i will select one the vpc c let's say okay or vpc because i don't have any subnet it's a vpc a i'm selecting and i am only selecting uh one availability zone. we'll discuss more into that what are those and create the attachment once i created the attachment it will come as a pending state now okay it will be in a pending state okay let us wait for some more time once it is in available so i'll pause this videos okay if you can see now uh, the transit gateway attachment is in available state okay state is now available now we can go to the transit gateway route table and verify whether the associated or propagated or not okay i can come to the transit gateway route table and if you see the associations see automatically there is a associated and if you see propagations automatically that is a propagated okay so we don't have to do anything as it is a dynamic whatever the attachment we are going to create and it is automatically associated and propagated okay so this is a complete uh, architecture like uh, the vpc a can communicate with c vpc c can communicate with a and every vpc resources can communicate with each other but then it will be a problem because if some customer have some requirement let's say this is the day vpc this is a prod VPC and this is a test VPC. So my requirement is Dave and test can communicate with each other, but no one should communicate with the prod. Okay. So how to restrict that? Okay. So for that, then we have to come up with the static route table. Okay. Because uh, transit gateway supports VRF like uh, virtual routing and forwarding. Okay. That supports. So we need to create static route table and how we are going to create it and what is the approach we will discuss in the our next videos. Okay. So on these videos, we understand what is the architecture of transit gateway and how the communications can happen and how to create the attachment. Okay. You can practice it. If you have any questions, please update in the comments. Then I will view it and I will help you on that. Thank you for your time. Thank you.